Hey everybody, welcome back to Books Ramblings. Today's video is the worst slash most disappointing books of 2022. I always look forward to filming this every year, but like it's also like really, really hard to decide what goes on the list and what doesn't. It's harder than my favorites video because I'm like, I didn't really care for this book, but is it bad enough to belong on the worst books of the year list? I had a very hard time. I'm not like completely satisfied with this list, but like I'm just gonna go with it. So I want to give a disclaimer. So like some of these books were like horrible. Like I really did hate them like with a passion. Some of these books though like I didn't even hate that much. They might have just not been what I was expecting and so I was kind of disappointed in them. I'll let you know what the case is from book to book. The Captive Kingdom by Jennifer A. Nielsen. I wasn't really sure if this one should be on this list because I gave it three stars. But I finally decided that it should be because this is book four in the Ascendance series and I was like so excited about this book and I had been looking forward to it for so long. I should say really quick this is not a Christian book but it is like clean middle grade fantasy. But I don't know the characters were just annoying me so much and making me so angry. And everyone was just like keeping secrets from each other and then getting mad about it and feeling betrayed and just like wishy-washy and like flipping back and forth with like their loyalties or like supposedly but like maybe they were just pretending to get away from the bad guys. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it like not really like a terrible book. I gave it three stars. It was like good in some ways but just a disappointment in other ways. Next is Arena by Karen Hancock. Again this is another book that like I gave three stars and like parts like part of it I really really liked but then other parts it just like wasn't what I expected it to be and therefore I was disappointed but like in and of itself it's really not like a bad book and I know like a lot of people would really like it. So this is like Christian, it's an allegory, kind of like Pilgrim's Progress, but like more sci-fi. And like for the first half of this book, I was loving it. And I was so excited because I was like, oh my gosh, I found like this sci-fi that I really like. But then like halfway through, things just changed for me. I figured some things out and like what was going on and it just kind of like ruined the story for me and it just wasn't what I wanted out of it. So I was like disappointed and then the last half I was starting to get like kind of bored and I just didn't, like didn't really care what was happening anymore. So yeah, that was just kind of like a me problem. Over Maya Dead Body by Sandra Orchard. This is a Serena Jones mystery. This is the final book in the trilogy. I had been really enjoying it. Um, book one is my favorite. I was waiting a really long time before I finally bought this book and finally finished it. So like I was just expecting to like love it and also figure out what happened with like the love triangle and everything. And so this book was like kind of a big deal, but I think what happened is that I forced myself to read this when I wasn't in the mood for a mystery. And so it was hard for me to like pay attention and follow the mystery. And so I was like confused. So I think I kind of sabotaged myself. I can't deny that at the time when I read it, like it definitely was a disappointment. And also the way the love tri triangle ended, I was so mad because she did not end up with a man that I was shipping throughout the entire trilogy. And I'm not okay with who she ended up with. That rarely happens, but in this case it did. I was very upset. So yeah, it's just more of a disappointment than like I hated it. Again, I hope when I read it again that I like it a lot more. The Ghost of Greylock by Dan Pabloki. This is a secular book. It is about like a real ghost and real hauntings. These kids are like being haunted by this dead girl and they're like trying to figure out like what happened to her and like who her killer was and all that stuff. I don't normally read stuff like this. I don't like books about real ghosts. So like normally this is not a book I would pick up, but I did read it because it was a gift from a friend of mine. And so I did read it but it just wasn't my thing. I didn't, I didn't like it. It like, it wasn't creepy to me. I just like simply just like didn't really like it. The Silver Chair by C.S. Lewis. This is book six in the Narnia series. I started it a couple years ago and then I took a really long break and then finally finished it. But like, I just wasn't into this at all. This is about like Eustace and his cousin Jill or like friend who they go to Narnia. They encounter all these creatures and like giants. Oh, I remember they're trying to find Prince Rillian, which is Caspian's son. Like he's gone missing and they're trying to find him. But like, I couldn't tell you anything beyond that because I was like not paying attention because I was like bored and I didn't care and I just like wasn't interested at all. So I just didn't like this one. Um, maybe one day I'll try to read it again 
and see if it was just like bad timing for me or something because this is definitely my least favorite in the series so yeah next is stolen mayfly bride by K sarah k l wilson i picked this up because of the cover like look at this cover and tell me it is not the most beautiful thing you've ever seen like it's it's just a masterpiece i love it everything about it the details of like the background and the mist the grays and whites and it's just like it's gorgeous i can't emphasize that enough it's beautiful and that's like probably the main reason i'm so disappointed that i didn't like it is because i wanted to love it so that i could buy it and have that beautiful cover on my shelves and i didn't like it at all so there were like multiple reasons this was like a clean but secular fantasy the guy is like of the fey people and the girl like is I, f I forget it's like something weird she like comes or like appears like once a year or something and she'll like grant someone's wish or something like that it's really fuzzy in my mind now i just had like a really hard time because the guy character was so like selfish and self-centered and I just didn't like him at all. And I feel like he didn't like get better throughout the book. Like he started that way and pretty much ended that way. So I didn't like him. I didn't like the romance. I didn't like the writing style was really hard for me to get into. Like I was really confused starting out. And then throughout the book, I just kept like, I was just like struggling. Yeah, there were just like a lot of reasons why I didn't connect with this book. Um, it was actually like more of a novella. I think it was pretty short. But it just wasn't for me, and I didn't care for it. And so I was very sad because the cover. Ugh. Snow and Rose by Emily Winfield Martin. This is like a secular, like, kids book. Maybe like middle grade or like elementary grade, whatever. I'm not sure how much it was based on any kind of fairy tale or if it was just like loosely inspired. I'm not really sure about the details of that. But I really liked the illustrations. It had a really pretty... Um, I guess like watercolor illustrations on the inside, but I just really didn't care for the story. I, I'm really picky when it comes to children's fantasy, like if I feel like it's like, I don't know, got like weird things going on or it's like trying to be really whimsical, you know? I actually like made it through most of the book and then I just like kind of skimmed the rest of it. So yeah, it just wasn't for me and I just like, I was really having a hard time finishing it because I just wasn't liking it. Target by Chris Bradford. This is part of the Bodyguard series. I'm not sure what number it is, but it's a little later in the series and it's like a prequel. It's like secular middle grade slash teen, I guess, about like this 14 year old kid that's like recruited to be a bodyguard um for other kids his age this one i just like was so disappointed and also like completely caught off guard with how much worse the language was in this one versus all of the previous books it, it just like came out of nowhere like so many other words used in this that i never saw in any of the other books just bad language and i'm like this is a kid's book why why is this in this like middle grade book i don't understand i liked the premise this girl had to guard a pop star but she's like undercover so like no one knows that she's guarding him so like i liked the idea but then the way it was done and some stuff that happened i just was not a fan of at all i will be on haul it i've just been waiting to like collect enough books for an unhaul video um so that's why i still have it but yeah i did i wouldn't recommend this one the other books yes this one you can skip it plus it's a prequel so it doesn't really like interrupt the story at all it's not really necessary and then i'm gonna upset some people so i'm sorry in advance but redeeming love by francine rivers is on this list i was like it's weird because starting off like i did give this three out of five stars and i was like there's so many things i don't like but like other parts were good so like three stars because i read this pretty like way earlier in the year but like i just feel like my animosity towards this book just really like grew over the course of last year <laughs> and so now it's on the worst books of the year video <laughs> i'm really sorry i know so many people like get so much out of this book and it just really like speaks to them and just get really emotional about it and they see god in it and i'm not discounting that like i understand like i can see why so many people have such good feelings towards this book and why they love it so much but i just couldn't get past so many things she's very talented um in the way she writes like her stories are interesting but it's just like certain content that she puts in her books that i just cannot get over and like i just gosh there's so many things so many things that i could say i think this guy what was his name michael i feel like he had potential as a good guy like he actually had a lot of good qualities he did like i i, I see i recognize that there were parts of him that i was like wow like that's a good guy to do that and react that way like 
good job, Michael. But then he would display other characteristics that I was like, whoa. Whoa there, sir. You know, I just like... <sighs> I couldn't, like, I just couldn't. And then there were other, like, side characters and side relationships that to me were so horrible that I was like, why is this happening and why is everyone okay with it? Like, why are they acting like this is normal? This is not okay. This is so horrible. There were so many things in this book that I just felt like the author went a little too far with and she added things that weren't necessary for the story and were just, like, really bothersome. And I was like, this is just, like, messed up. Like, I can't... Why would you put this in the book? Like, it was not necessary. I'm telling you it was not necessary. Yeah, like, I'll just... I'll leave it there. I could go on and on, and I could give you details of stuff that I remember that happened that I would love to talk about, but I don't want to give spoilers. Again, I gave it three stars, but I think I need to change it to two stars because, like, I just really dislike it a whole lot more the longer I've thought about it. So, yes. This book is not for me. I think Francine Rivers as an author is just not for me. I just, I just can't, you guys. I just literally can't. I'm sorry. The last book that I'm going to leave you with is... <laughs> I wonder if you guys, like, y'all that, like, consistently watch my videos, if y'all can guess what book is, like, my most hated book of the year. My, like, most hated book, I saved the best for last, of 2022 is Lost in Darkness by Michelle Grieb. You guys, I hate this book with my whole heart, okay? Where do I start? I just hated it. <laughs> breathe okay I just hated the way the story went okay nothing wrong nothing against the author's like writing style she's like a very good author there were some interesting elements in the story and I really liked the gloomy atmosphere I read it in the fall and I just thought it was really good for that time of year some interesting like medical it's like Christian historical romance by the way so like some medical information from the time period that I found interesting and a whole like corrupt doctor and like experimentation stuff going on but it was just the way things went in this book oh, it was so horrible I will just like never forgive the author for what she did to these characters and how she ended things if you're like me and you like happily ever afters and you want things to end well do not read this book because you will be left so like upset and traumatized the way that I was so I was just so 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 mad about the way things ended I was so depressed like I wanted to scream and then also something else happened like I just I can't explain it because it would be so spoilery but there's so many things I want to say it's not even like the one thing that happened another thing happened after and I was like are you kidding me why are you doing this in this location right now this is not the time bro like it's not not the time not the scene what are you doing and then it was just like a whole thing and i was so mad it was supposed to be like a frankenstein inspired story as well which i've never read frankenstein but if that is as depressing as this book i will never read it so yeah it just wasn't for me i know other people that actually really liked it and i'm like but why it ended so horribly. I guess I'm just gonna like leave it there. Hope you guys enjoyed my ranting. It's good to get it out every once in a while. It's good for the soul. It's just like, oh, I feel better now. Let me know what your least favorite book of the year was. I'd be super interested to hear about it. Or like if you loved any of the books that I talked about in this video, that would also be interesting. Um, it's always like interesting to hear people's different opinions. So yeah, definitely let me know and we can talk about it. And I'll see you guys in the next Bookish Ramblings video. Bye.